Hey guys, in this video I am hoping to explain everything I did to get an A star in AQA A level biology and therefore hopefully help you get one too. Basically let's get into if it. If you're not understanding something, get it cleared up. Just sort it out there and then rather than going on and still not understanding it because it will get worse and worse. But eventually you'll find that all of the content will come together. So if you're still not understanding something, it may just be a case of it all comes together at the end because the content does link to all the content if that makes sense. Don't make revision resources as you go along because you will fall at the fussy mark scheme. I explain this in more detail in my how to overcome the fussy mark schemes video so please check that out and likewise in that I explain how to compile revision notes together more efficiently so they will actually be better notes to learn from. So again you need to learn to compile all of the information together as best as possible. It is so so important to use mark schemes as well. You need to be looking at mark schemes to be able to get into the mindset of an examiner then you will understand what sort of answers they're wanting from the questions as soon as you see it and it'll become so much easier to answer them in that exam. Cram. At least 24 hours before that final exam, you must cover all of that content again. You can't have your biology exam on the Wednesday and finish going through some content on Saturday and then not look at it again until after the exam. You need to look at it all again in the final 24 hours. So even if that means you're not going to get a full eight hours sleep the night before, stay awake, cram for it, make sure you get that content covered. Revision methods, flashcards online and physical so online ones could be like Quizlet and Chegg as well and then you've also got post-it notes, mind maps, blurting, songs, past papers, baseline mock anagrams, repetition and recall. And I've probably still missed a few out there. Write notes on practicals too. Don't just go through these two years and do your practical elements and be like, right, okay, yeah, I've passed that experiment, move on to my next thing because it will be asked about in the exam. Isn't it about like 10, 15% has to be practical questions. If you come to the end of year 13 and you start revising and you're like, oh yeah, um, I haven't got anything to revise about that now. Then that will be a bit stressful for you. So I've just been editing back this video and realised that I forgot to say you don't actually have to pass the practical element. So if that's a deciding factor as to whether you take the A level or not, I think it's really important that you do know you do not have to pass it. If you fail your experiments, totally fine by the way, you could still get full marks in A star and A level biology and just get a fail in the experiment. It's a totally separate thing. Baseline marks are not only important for biology but for all subjects, but honestly it should, you really need to to do it for biology to be able to overcome those fussy mark schemes. When I'm saying a baseline mark, I'm meaning don't revise for it. Like say from March until the exams, every Sunday do a baseline mark. You will find that your baseline knowledge will get better and better and better. So even in the worst case scenario, when you come to that real exam, if you haven't revised, you still will be able to smash it. I actually really would advise looking at the old spec papers as well, because they are separated out really well into individual sort of topics. Everything to do with the environment is all sort of on one paper. So if you're know you're struggling on a certain topic then you can easily find that on one paper lots of past paper questions all together and the more experience you have with the questions the better your answers are going to be in terms of answering the questions look for keywords just read the question keyword there there's a keyword there there's a keyword there just write absolutely everything you know down about that keyword to be able to defeat the fussy mark schemes because you're not going to lose marks at the end of the day so if you've got the time do it and in terms of getting the time get extra time if you are entitled to extra time and let me tell you the majority of people are just get the extra time that you are entitled to. Stay motivated to get your work done. Listen to classical music and set yourself small targets like, oh, I'm gonna finish reading this section of my revision before I text my friend back or before I have something to eat. Do you know what I mean? Just set yourself little targets and you will find that you get things done a lot quicker. You must work hard all throughout the year. You can't get to like May and decide, now I'm gonna start working. You have to work throughout the year. So you need to be getting your notes right from the start and therefore you won't be wasting time and you will be able to optimize your time to get the best revision notes and therefore have the most effective time when revising. Ask lots of questions. Even if the question seems totally random and isn't gonna come up in any sort of exam, it will help you. If you are asking random questions sort of to do with the content, then you will likely get random answers back, which won't be on the specification, but therefore classes as beyond the spec. And you can use it in your essays to hit those extra marks. Also, please don't worry about when you're gonna finish the content. I know it may seem stressful. And it's like, oh my God, I've only got a few weeks down until the exams and I've still not finished the content. Easter is a good time to finish content. So then you can have that next half term to revise. But if you don't finish by Easter, it's also not a problem. This advice for biology, it's absolutely the opposite of for maths, but I would always prioritize doing actual past papers for biology than using the CGP workbook. I actually did answer all the questions. And if you do have time, to do that great do it but in hindsight I don't think it was more helpful than the past papers so if you've only got time to do one 
do the past papers. So I thought I'd just show you that this is the CGP revision guide. All of the content is explained really clearly so it's straightforward to understand and then it always has some practice questions and exam style questions at the bottom of the pages with answers in the back which I really would advise doing if you have the time. If you don't have the time just focus on past papers. And likewise for the CGP workbook and then this is my general A-level revision folder which I keep both biology and chemistry in with dividers separating them. So this is AS biology. I do keep them separate as AS and A2 because it's basically just paper one and paper two. So there were six experiments in AS so I just put the six all together so I can see how they're different, what's different, how it's explained, what the results were and everything like that so I can answer the exam experiment questions. It doesn't have to look pretty as long as it's effective that's all that matters. People always ask me if I can read these mind maps. Yes I can read them but I don't make these to read them back. I just make them so I'm writing all of the content out at once which makes it stick in my head a bit more because I'm using muscle memory from writing it. These questions have all been taken from the bottom of the pages of the CGP workbooks, these questions that I was talking about. I answered all of these and then I wrote them all up so I'd be able to review them clearly. And then we get on to A2. So when it came to essays, I did lots of mind maps for all of the past essay questions. So if a condensation and hydrolysis question came up, I knew I had all of these different sections to think about. I haven't actually completed that mind map because even if an essay question came up that I had planned, I didn't find it that helpful. It just sort of reassured me that it would be possible in the exam, if that makes sense. And obviously with essays it's really important that you don't take content from the same topic So I did this to make it really clear of all the individual topics and where they need to be separate from This is another experiment. I've made it really clear and that's my other take on the A2 experiments So questions that I got wrong in mocks or I thought were a bit tricky or difficult or something I wanted to review I wrote it up and then I read this just before the exam I also read this just before the exam just like short key facts that I need to read just before the exam to make sure I don't forget it and these are all my essay puns again. B E A beautiful. So anything that was a cycle, I just drew it as a cycle so you could see exactly how it happens, which makes it clear and easy to understand. And that's pretty much it. And these are all the flashcards that I had for biology as well. I would love to say that the different colours were for year 12 and year 13, but it's not, it's just for the different teachers that I had. But the text is different coloured for whether it was year 13 or year 12. And the blue flashcard is for Beyond the Spec. So to make sure you can get all marks for them long six mark questions, you need to be able to make sure you know all of your long answers word for word off by heart. So the best way to learn them is obviously by flashcards, blazing it as many times as you can, highlighting the key points that are going to get you the marks, and also learning as many of these as possible to overcome those fussy mark schemes. And this is how I organised the majority of my content. I had two of these for year 12 and year 13. So basically in it, it's just got the different subjects and then it's got homeworks, past papers, mocks, and then future papers. And that's just the way I like to organize it. By the end of year 11, you may have got like a grade nine in biology and then you go into year 12 and you can be really disheartened by getting something like a D. But you have to remember at the start of year 10, you weren't getting grade nines. Well, I don't think you were anyway. You were getting lower than grade nines and you're working up and up and up. And then it's the same again. You're starting again from scratch, A level, year 12 to year 13, you're gonna have to work back up. So poor grades like Ds and Es, totally normal, totally fine, don't worry. All in all, A-level biology was the only subject I knew I wanted to take from the end of year 11 and I can happily say that I don't regret that decision. Yes, of course, there were plenty of times where I got stressed, where I felt behind, I had too much to do, especially when I didn't understand something and also especially when you were revising for that paper three and you've got to cover all of the content again. But actually looking back, A-level biology was my favourite subject. Although yes, maybe maths was my best subject, a-level biology was sort of more exciting and interesting. I would really recommend it, but you have to be prepared to put the work in. And you also have to be prepared to be disheartened with poor grades and the struggle with the mark schemes. But please don't be put off by the mark schemes because it's not as bad as it comes across. You only really sort of understand it once you do it. But if you are up for the challenge and you quite like biology, then absolutely go for it. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I really hope that helps you. Bye.